Greetings and welcome to yarnspirations.com. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the knit envelope cardigan. This is a very simple knit worked in ribbing and an Irish moss stitch. Let me hold that up a little closer. There's the moss stitch and there's the ribbing. And we have made this in Peyton's Classic Wool Worsted. Now we have used the natural mix color, but it's, this comes in a zillion colors. So you can get a color that works best for your wardrobe. You're also going to need a size US 7 or 4.5 millimeter circular knitting needle. Now we're not knitting in the round, we're knitting back and forth, but because of the large number of stitches, it's much more convenient to put them on a circular knitting needle. So you would need a cable that is 36 inches or 91.5 centimeters, or longer is also okay, but not shorter. And of course you need that in the size needed to obtain gauge, and you're going to need one stitch marker. As always, here on yarnspirations.com, the patterns are color coded, so you can go through and circle the numbers that relate to your size, or you could also just look for the color of the size that you're making. Now, this pattern is knit in two pieces, and we have a schematic on the back so you can see what you're doing, where and when and why. So the first piece is the front. We're going to cast on here and knit in this direction. So let's take a look at that first on camera. But the other thing I want to point out before we move on, one of the things I love about this particular pattern is there are some style tips on the third page. I love that they have put the, the shrug together or cardigan rather they're calling it. They have put the envelope cardigan together with several different looks so you can get a better idea of how to incorporate it into your own unique wardrobe. But let's get started on the front first. Okay, let's take a look at the pattern. We're going to start with the front. You will cast on the given number of stitches. I haven't cast on quite that many because I don't like to have a giant swatch on camera, but I did cast on an odd number. Do not join. Once again, we're using a circular needle to accommodate the large number of stitches, not because we're working in the round. Working back and forth across the needle in rows, proceed as follows. The right side row is knit one, purl one, knit one all the way across. The second row or wrong side row is purl one, knit one, purl one all the way across. And we're going to do that. Let us see. Uh, we're going to repeat those last two rows of knit one, purl one ribbing for three inches or seven and a half centimeters ending on a wrong side row. Now, a lot of people say to me, how do I know if it's a wrong side row if I had to go answer the telephone in the middle of my knitting and it's ribbing and ribbing pretty much looks the same on both sides. In this particular instance, all the right side rows are beginning with knit and all the wrong side rows are beginning with purl. So when you pick your knitting up and you're going to see what row, what stitch you're going to start with. I can look at this and see that I'm going to start with a knit stitch. Well, now I know this is a right side row and I did in fact end on a wrong side row. Once again, you're going to work for three inches or seven and a half centimeters, but I'm not going to go quite that long. Um, let's take a look at setting up and shaping for the collar. So we're going to, on the right side row, knit one and then purl one, knit one seven times. And we know that because that's what's in the parentheses. So one, two, three, four. Oops, sorry, that was three. <laughs> four. Oh my goodness, I'm losing my own count. So we did a knit one and then it's purl one, knit one seven times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the abbreviation is PM, that is place marker. Now I'm using a locking stitch marker because I just happen to have one laying around, but you could use a ring marker here because you're just gonna slide it back and forth. So I'm gonna place my marker. Now I'm going to knit one, purl one, and repeat from the asterisk. So I'm gonna knit one, purl one, all the way across to the end of the row. So after I have placed that marker, uh, it's knit one, purl one to the end of the row. Now this is not going to continue on in the ribbing. I'm setting up the, uh, the other stitch. It's not ribbing from here on out. So it's going to look a little confusing to you when you're changing. 
because you're purling the knits and knitting the purls, but it is not ribbing after the marker. So we're going to work in this direction, knit one, purl one, all the way to the end of the row. So we're coming up to the end of that first row. Still working in knit one, purl one, across to the very end. And that's the end of the first row and you can see that we have maintained the ribbing on the right hand side of the marker but we have started the uh, moss stitch on the left hand side of the marker. So let's take at a look at the second row which is knit one purl one to marker, slip marker, SLM means slip marker, purl one knit one seven times and purl one at the end. So once again knit one purl one all the way across till we get to the marker. Okay, we're coming up to the marker, continuing across in our knit one, purl one stitch pattern. And we come to the marker, we're going to SLM, which is slip marker. So all I'm doing it's moving the marker from the right uh, from the left hand needle to the right hand needle. Let's see that again. From the left hand needle tip to the right hand needle tip without doing anything to it. I'm just slipping it. After that, it says purl one, knit one seven times. Remember on this short side, the smaller section next to the marker, we are maintaining that in the ribbing pattern. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, purl that last stitch. Okay, so that's the end of the second row. All right, at the beginning of the third row, we're going to knit one and then purl one, knit one seven times, which should sound very familiar by now. Knit one, purl one, knit one seven times. One. Two. three, four, five, six, seven, and then slip the marker, SLM, slip marker, and now we're going to purl one, knit one to the end of the row. Remember, it is not ribbing on the larger side. We're working in that Irish moss stitch. All right, so we're going to continue on doing the third through the sixth rows, just as they're written, slipping the marker every time we come to it. And then it's repeat the last four rows of Irish moss stitch and rib pattern until the number of inches or centimeters for your size has been completed, once again, ending on a wrong side row. So I'm going to put just a couple more rows on my swatch, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna take a look at how to shape the collar. The next thing we're going to do is shape the collar. Now, I want to call your attention to the schematic on page two. 
So it has red arrows showing you the direction of the work. So we've been working on the front and it says the direction of the work is that way. So here's my cast on edge, correct? And then I have done the ribbing and then I have done as much pattern stitch as the instructions tell me. And now I'm going to shape the collar by adding increases in the ribbed section as many as it tells me to. And then I'll decrease on the other side, get back to my original number of stitches and follow the directions so that I have a mirror image. At that point, you would move on to the back. But let's take a look and see how that collar looks. So I have finished my uh, section up here that sort of proceed as follows things. I have finished that with a wrong side row. And I know that because the row began with the moss stitch and ended with the rib stitch. And on a right side row, it begins with the rib stitch section and ends with the moss, right? So that helps you figure out where you're going. So on my right side row, I'm going to rib to the marker. So that is just the way we've been doing. Knit the knits, purl the purls. So when I get to the marker, I'm going to do a make one increase and then I'm going to slip the marker. So as the new stitches, these increased stitches become added, they are worked into the, the rib side, into the ribbing pattern. So I've worked up to the marker and now I need to make one. So I'm going to lift the horizontal bar between the stitch under the stitch I just made and the next stitch on the left needle. I'm going to bring that up and put it on the left hand needle tip. And then I'm going to knit that into the back row. Now that would be eventually that will be a purl on the right side, but I find the make one in knit is a little neater. So I'll incorporate it into the ribbing pattern on the way back. Slip marker. Remember you're moving the mark marker from the left hand tip to the right hand tip without uh, doing anything to it and then it says pattern to the end of row and then I know that I am on a right side row so I'm changing up my moss stitch now so I'm going to purl the knits and knit the purls. So I'm going to do this all the way across. only trick to this pattern is remembering that on a right side row to the right of the marker is ribbed and to the left of the marker is not. After that you can pretty much figure out what stitch you have to do at any given moment. So you're going to continue. Uh, so after we did the increase row which is the one that I'm doing then you would do three more rows even and then you would do another increase row. So you're going to do that 19 more times. You're going to repeat the last row 19 times more and that's going to get us to here. So these are the stitches we did. Then we're doing a very gradual increase, increase, increase. See how it's getting wider? And then it's going to tell you to work even. So this is working even on the number of stitches you have. When that is done, when we get to the next row, after the work even section, it says pattern to two stitches before the marker, knit two together, slip marker. So again, when we were increasing, we we're putting the increase right in front of the marker. On the decrease rows, we're putting the decrease right next to the marker. And you're going to come back until you have the same number of stitches that you did when you began. Follow that and do the border. And then you will cast off in the ribbing stitch. So I'm coming up at the end of the second row after shape collar. I'm working across in my moss stitch and I'm going to come up to the marker. Now remembering I want to keep the new stitches on the same side of the marker as the ribbing. So I'm going to go ahead and slip the marker from one side to the next without doing anything. And there's my extra stitch and I have to figure out if it wants to be a knit or a purl. So I'm just looking a couple ahead 
and to keep the ribbing uh, even on this side it would be knit purl knit purl so this is going to be a knit so my yarns in the back I'm going to knit that first stitch and then rib to the end so remember it's three rows even and by work even we mean no increase and then one row of the increase There's my extra stitch. It's fallen right into the pattern. That will be the same as the one, two down. After I've got my front cast off and finished, I'm going to do the back. Now to make the back, I'm going to cast on the number of stitches I need, and I'm going to follow from the first double asterisk to the second double asterisk, asterisk of the front, which is essentially the ribbon, ribbing. Here's the first double asterisk and it goes to the second double asterisk. So the ribbing is what's going on here. And then proceed as follows. It's going to set up and have us continue on in the Irish Moss pattern stitch. And you'll go the number of inches or centimeters called for for your size. And then you will end with a wrong side row and cast off in pattern. Now, before you assemble, I think it would be much easier in your life to block them as two individual pieces instead of making the whole big gigunda thing happen and then trying to block it out. So I would definitely block both of these pieces before I started the assembly and that way you'll have a perfectly lovely seam. So we were talking before about order of work. So we did the front that way and we did the back this way. So I'm going to center the back piece along the straight edge of the front piece and I'm going to sew those two pieces together. After that is finished, I'm going to take the three inches of rib here and sew it to the three inches of rib there. And I'm going to do the same on the other side, right where that arrow is. You're only sewing the ribbing together. You're leaving that as an open space. So that is all there is to that. Not a whole ton of finishing, just a little seaming here and a little seaming on the side. So uh, that is the knit envelope cardigan in beautiful wool yarn from Peyton's Classic Wool Worsted. And once again, if you look at the third page of the pattern, we even have some styling tips for you now, which I love that we're doing this because it's wonderful to see a sweater looking flat or on the model, but it's also kind of cool to see it with pieces you may already have laying around and you can make this piece work in your work wardrobe for your own individual style. So thanks so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again real soon here on yarnspirations.com.